All right, so our first chord was C major 7, and it was that old-fashioned one that we've done for a long time. All right, so then our next one was the, uh, where we invert that voicing, and we've got the 7th, the 9th, the 5th, and the 8th. So same inner four strings, 7, 9, it doesn't look quite like that. So 7th fret, use your middle finger, yeah, and then the 9th fret with your pinky, and then the 5th fret with your index, and then your ring finger on the 8th fret. So it's nice to just kind of go through that again. We got our first voicing, our second one, all right, first and second. It's kind of funny. I mean, in a way, like you can make a nice uh, sound with like like sounds like a chord progression, like a cool chord progression. It's really just one chord. those written down right all right cool so yeah I like to use my middle finger on both of those notes on the tenth fret of the uh, A and D string all right so then just to jump through those chords our first one was a root position and then starting from the third and start from the fifth now these the the one that starts from the third and the one that starts from the fifth, I visualize those around the uh, the root on the E string. That's how I you know that's how I I'll find it in the future if I go somebody says play a C major seven and I maybe I do this one and I see that the third or I see the fifth and I do that you know because I'm looking at I'm looking at it in relation to that root. Cool, very important. All right, so then there was the last one. All right, cool. So now here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take those uh, four shapes and we're gonna figure out the dominant version of each, and then we'll find out the minor seven version of each, and then we'll try putting them in a tune. We'll just try playing a tune entirely with those voicings and using good voice leading with those voicings. So let's go back to our first one. This is the major seven. How do we make that dominant? Exactly. That's it. We just do that classic voicing. Oh, by the way, and you know how you wrote the other ones out, like left to right in this little fashion? Uh, it might be nice to write the other ones underneath it, like the dominant and then the minor ones, so you can see them all. Like here's our major seven volt version, dominant seven version, and minor seven version. You don't have to rewrite the, the root third, seventh, and all that stuff. Uh, because it's the same. It's just that the seventh is now flatted and that's how we'll come up with those ones. Cool? All right, cool. So then uh, the next one was this one, right? And what note do we have to change to make that into a dominant chord? right here that's the B note which is the seventh in the C right so we need to flat that to uh, uh, make a dominant chord so right so that's this is how I use the fingering middle finger just like before then ring finger to do that triad or that uh, tritone and then uh, index finger and then pinky on the B string, eighth fret. Just one note changed, but we had to change the fingering to make it more playable. Just like here, only one note changed. Cool. All right. 
right, so now our dominant ones are... And then our next one, we have to figure that out. The one that starts from the fifth it used to be this. Which one of those notes are we going to change to make it um, dominant? Yeah, exactly, the pinky up there. So that's what we have to flat, yeah. Cool. So you can still do that. You can still do it like fingering wise. I've got, this is my major seven, right? And I can just replace that with the ring finger to be the uh, dominant seven. Or if you want, you can, you know, try to cram those fingers into that fret. Whichever way works best for you. I like, I like this. Like a little mini bar, only barring two frets, two strings rather. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little, it was a little tough at first, but once I got the hang of it, it's a lot easier than trying to get all my fingers into the one fret. Especially if I was up here, you know, imagine if I did it like, uh, um, like a G7. Like, no way would I be able to, like, no way I couldn't do it. Plus, I have little hands, so I like, um, I like using shorter scale length guitars, which are even smaller down in here. So it really makes sense to, um, do it that way for me. So now our dominant chords was our root position, starting from the third and starting from the fifth. Cool. Um, yeah. All right, so, um, now we have our last one, which used to be this. You know, it's interesting, I never, I never did this one barred like that. So I should, I should do that. Easy, easy to learn. A little hard at first, but... But so that's the major seven, right? How do we, how are we going to make that dominant? string uh 14th fret right now that i don't i don't i don't finger it this way to have my finger at kind of an angle like that what i do is i would switch my middle and my ring finger so now they're kind of more upright so i've got uh the frets are 13th 14th 12th 13th um, and the fingering I'm using is middle, pinky, index, ring. Oh yeah, exactly. Or the C major 9. It's just the, uh, you just switch. Remember which one's which here. This is our seventh, so this is our third, and we need that tritone. Cool. All right, cool, man. And those are all written down. All right, now we got our dominant shapes. So let's go back to our dominant shape in the root position. And how are we going to make that a minor seven? All right. That's right, there you go. So we've got this minor seven shape. That's kind of familiar, right? I mean, obviously you've done that one a lot. So go ahead and jot that down. Yeah, so take take your dominant, and it's easier to, to find your minor seven by changing your dominant chord, because you only have to change one note from the dominant. Right? Because we already have that flat seven. So if you play the dominant shape that we had that starts from the third. 
Which note we got? Do we have to change? That note is the uh, da, is the flat seven. Seeing it seeing it in relation to the root helps a lot. So that's your flat seven, and this is our shape. Obviously, we're looking for the third, right? With your right hand, take your index finger and push it on the root. Now ask yourself, which one of these notes with your left hand is the third? Exactly. So that's the one we need to flat. So, and I, I don't change my fingering, I just shift that middle finger down. Now it's really important to, to know this because that's how you can find the shape easily. You think of your, your C, C dominant chord and you go, here's my C. So here's my third, and that's where my shape begins, from the third. Same thing if it's C minor. And you go, oh, here's my third, and then you do the shape. That's how I find it. Um, this is by finding the third in this shape. This is because it's a close position. Okay, so that's the minor. Go ahead and jot that one down. Play the play the dominant shape of that second inversion. All right. Take your index finger to the right hand, point it on the root, and go. Which one of those notes is the third? Good. So that's the note you flat. Yeah. So this one I do uh, middle and ring finger on those notes, but you could you could do it like this if you wanted to be Holdsworth and use this for something else. You know, like if you wanted to be able to use your pinky for something else, then you want to do that barring trick still. Yep. So I do that again with this one finger over those two strings. Okay, now we got them all, man. We got the major seven, dominant seven, and minor seven. Uh, all the voicings coming from the one shape that we chose. You know, if we had chose chosen a different shape, then we would have a whole different uh, vocabulary here to work with. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those shapes that we learn, and we're gonna try to play through a jazz tune, just because there's a lot of chords in a jazz tune. You can do these chords with any genre. Um, and we're going to try to stay in one position, and that's the trick. Staying in one position is what's going to make us like use all of the voicings. So let's try it with Autumn Leaves, just because that's pretty basic. <laughs> 